Hi everyone, welcome back to the Stitches and Scribbles channel. My name is Erin and today you are seeing a pre-filmed Vlogmas episode. So I was reaching a point where I was feeling a little burned out with doing daily videos. So I'm doing a couple in batches so that I can be done sooner. Um, love doing Vlogmas, but I definitely picked a very busy year to decide to do it again. So uh, even though for you it is December 23rd, for me it is December 16th because I'm pre-filming a couple over uh, my final weekend before the last week of school and traveling for the holidays. So if you see this outfit or it looks familiar or it's in another video, now you know why. Um, we are going to do our advent candle for today. So since it is day 23 for you, we're going to open box 23 on the calendar and this one is an orange candle and the scent name is spiced berries definitely a very like Christmassy scent it reminds me of some like Christmas teas that I've had in the past um, specifically there's one from Republic of Tea that's a holiday cranberry tea and it smells almost exactly like that so that is a lovely scent um, for today, we're actually bringing back something that I used to do quite frequently on this channel, but I haven't done in a while, and that is bullet journaling. So I stopped doing my monthly bullet journal videos here on YouTube because I dramatically switched how I set up my bullet journal and made the setup process and designs a lot simpler, but I figured for Vlogmas I could show you how I set up my 2024 bullet journal. So I typically purchase the Artist Loft journals from Michaels. I always get the ones with the dotted paper. And this one, I don't remember what the color name was because I looked at it online first. I think this one was just called Taupe. Um, but I like them because there's a spot for a single pen if you want. It has the rubber band to keep it closed and there's enough pages for how I typically set up my journals. So I think this is the third one that I've purchased of the exact same um, type of notebook and it's been working really well for me the last couple years in terms of the size and the number of pages inside. Typically what I do for my bullet journals is I um, pick a color for each month or section uh, this worked really well for me last year. I did all pastels because my bullet journal cover was mint green. This year I decided to make kind of an earth toned rainbow of colors. Um, this is all folded up because I used an envelope and it has someone's address on it. So that's why it's folded so funny so that you can't see. Um, but I picked a more earth toned leaning palette of colors. And then usually I do one for each month. Um, and that kind of visually just helps me like see how many weeks are left and things like that. I have also in the past taped the edges of my journal with washi tape for each new section so that I could see from the side what color was coming up. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to do that or not, um, but if I can find enough washi tape colors that match, I might go ahead and do it. As for my markers that I'm using because that color palette showed both markers and colored pencils. I am using these markers which are the um, Zebra Mild Liners. They're double edged so one end is a fine tip marker and one end is a chisel tip. That kind of just helps for drawing different shapes. Um, and then most of the colored pencils that I have are Crayola brand but I think there's a couple in there that are Faber-Castell, but they're old colored pencils. I just picked ones that most closely matched the marker colors I picked because I had way more colored pencils to choose from than markers. Um, the washi tape that I typically use is just solid color washi tape I purchased on Amazon. So if you see that in the video, that's what I'm using. It's so old that I don't remember <laughs> what it is anymore. But I figure I'll just put some background music on for you as I'm working and give you an overhead shot of me setting up my bullet journal for the year.
Okay, now that I have everything set up, I figured I'd kind of do like a quick explanation of everything. So I started by just putting the tracker section and all of the months on the table of contents with their color. I'll wait and do the page number until um, I have finished each section. I did realize that the pages of this journal are numbered, which is really nice. Um, so I don't need to add those numbers in myself. They do have a couple pages of table of contents as well as a key that you can make. I'm not sure if I want to use the key page yet or not, so for now I'm leaving it blank. Then for my tracker section, I went with my kind of pinky purple color, and then you can see that tape edge from the side. Um, last year I did a year in pixels and tracked a couple different things that I wanted to keep track of for the whole year. Since I haven't decided exactly what I want to track yet, I did not put in the color keys yet and I left it blank. Um, but basically you color a square each day to track something. Um, in the past I have done like my mood for the day and assigned each mood a different color. Um, but since I wasn't sure what I wanted to do yet, I don't have titles or... Um, color keys in there yet. I also created a reading tracker. Um, I last year ended up having to add some inserted pages into my reading tracker, um, which if I have to do that again that'll be totally fine, but I tried to space it out a little bit more this year um, as well as adding my genre key up top. Then I also create a future log page for the year that the journal is in so that if I haven't created the weekly pages yet for a certain month, I still have a place to write in upcoming dates. And then I do the same thing for the following year. So this one's for 2025. Then I did my January pages. And again, you can see that tape from the edge. And I keep my weekly spreads really, really simple now. So I have a space for each day of the week that I put um, events and tasks that have to be done on a specific day in those boxes. Um, and then tasks that just in general need to get done for the week go in the bigger bottom section. And I do a journal section as well. I generally only write one to two lines a day for my journal, usually with like a star if it was something positive, an X if it was something negative or a dash if it was something neutral, just to kind of get the like key parts of my day recorded. But I just did a slight variation on this layout for each of my weekly spreads, ending with one for only Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, because January ends on a Wednesday this year. So that's it for my 2024 bullet journal so far. And that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this gave you some bullet journaling inspiration if you needed it. Um, I definitely have really enjoyed using my bullet journal over the years. It has made keeping track of events a lot easier for me because it's in a format that I actually use. And um, I'm not carrying around a giant notebook anymore like I used to, which is really, really nice. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in seeing some of my other crafty videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below so you can be notified of all my crafty content right here on YouTube. And if you'd like to follow me on other social media platforms, that information will be in the description box below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everyone.